Logan Sargent has been announced uh, as the Williams driver in 2023. If he can get his super license, he would be the first U.S. driver in F1 since 2015. Is this similar to the Colton Herta situation with the super license, or do we feel better about Sargent's chances of making it into F1? No, we feel much better about this. The Colton Herta one, really, he had to go and fight his case because he just didn't have enough points. Uh, and the mm-hmm. FIA turned around and said, rules are rules. You don't have enough points. You haven't really gained enough experience or got the results to be able to come into Formula One. That's why we have those rules. So Herta, I mean, we can go on and on about <laughs> how IndyCar maybe should be weighted slightly heavier in that in that points system, but it's not. So uh, he's he, he's out, but it looks a lot better for Sargent. I mean, it's not mm-hmm. certain, but it's nearly certain. Really, he has to finish... Um, Top six in F2. He's currently third. There are a bunch of drivers behind him, but for it to go against him, uh, basically they've all got to have amazing weekends and he's got to have a terrible weekend. And uh, really the odds are that's not going to happen. Plus he's picking up extra points for uh, FP1 drives. He did one in Austin. Um, So yeah, that that should tip him over the edge. We should have an American driver uh, in Formula 1 next year. It's just not 100% confirmed yet. He was obviously down in Austin. I'm just curious with all the popularity that you've seen, you know, growing and growing and growing here in the States, you're currently in the States, you know, what does that do for the sport overall by placing an American driver on the grid? Like we saw back in 2015. Yeah, I think this time is perfect timing. So Mm -hmm. the problem always is, is that if you just put a driver on the grid from a country and, you know, he or she is not particularly competitive, then it's tricky. It's tricky to get that kind of momentum going behind Mm -hmm. them but because we've had this big boom of interest in formula one in the united states because we now had three races for next year las vegas joining the calendar alongside miami and austin i think it's perfect so really um you know he he, he's a good kid he seems like a really nice guy and uh i think you know the talent's there and okay he hasn't won formula two this year but he's been very competitive he's come in right from the start and he's also come through uh, the European side of things. So rather than going down the IndyCar route and trying to make the jump across, which I think is much harder, he's gone through the kind of F1, FIA approved route uh, ladder. We often call it the motorsport ladder mm-hmm. up to Formula One. So uh, I think he's got, you know, a- every chance of, of making it big. And, you know, the fact that so many people in Formula One want an American on the grid, uh, you know, we want someone for everyone to cheer for, you know, when we go to Miami and Austin and Las Vegas. I just hope that Williams can give him a car that, means that he's not right at the back. It means that he can get in amongst the midfield at least and show us what he can do. Yeah, he would replace the outgoing Nicholas Latifi. And of course, we will wait and see if he gets enough points with that super license to be able to join the grid in 2023. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content plus live streaming, make sure to subscribe to ESPN Player.